What is going on YouTube? I am Prepper Princess, the author of Living on Almost Nothing. If you are interested in purchasing my book, I will go ahead and leave a link down in the description box below. As you all know, one of my favorite things, my passion, my best toy ever is electric bikes, e-bikes to be exact. Now, today we're going to be doing a product review of the Heoki Rhino e-bike, which is a blast to ride. They're, they're always so much fun. Now, before we continue, I do want you to know that if I do not believe in an e-bike to the point where I find it would be detrimental to associate my name with that e-bike, I do not do a product review. Now, you guys don't know, but behind the scenes, I've now had two e-bikes where I thought that they were so bad that I actually wrote to the company and I said, hey, listen, I can't promote this product. Um, the only thing that I'm going to be able to do is do a horrible review on my channel about this. But since our, your customer service is so good and I do not want to promote bad publicity, would you prefer if I just did not make a video and you know disposed of the bike or sold the bike at my discretion? And both times they said yes. So I want you all to know that when I make these e-bike reviews, there are some e-bikes that I get and I simply do not make a review on them because the bike is so bad. But that is not the case with the Rhino. This is a really fun bike. It is a motorcycle type and this is my first e-bike that is a motorcycle style. All right, so let's go for a quick ride and then we'll go ahead and get to all the specifications of the e-bike.
The all new Heoki Rhino is a motorcycle style e-bike. It has a 48 volt, 26.1 amp hour battery that is capable of distances up to 90 miles. It has a 48 volt, 1000 watt rear hub drive motor. The frame is an AL661 M mode with 20 inch by four inch on and off-road hybrid fat tires. It has an easy to use and read LCD display with USB charging option, and it comes with a US standard 3 amp smart charger. It has a Shimano seven speed gear shift and it has intelligent pedal assist at five levels. It charges in about eight to nine hours and it weighs 83.77 pounds with a total payload capacity of 400 pounds. That's high. The recommended rider height is five foot five to six foot eight, very short to very tall. The components include an alloy brake lever with cutoff sensor, a KMC seven speed chain, 160 millimeter hydraulic brakes with a Pro Max stem. It has an alloy chain ring crank and alloy suspension with hydraulic lock. The spokes are stainless steel. There is an alloy platform pedal. The bike frame is made of 66 one aluminum and the headlight is a high lumen LED headlight. The handlebars are Pro Max 31.8 and it has a patent comfort saddle. There is also a side mount alloy kickstand and alloy 30.4 seat post. The total length of the e-bike is 77.6 inches with a wheelbase of 47.7 inches. The wheel diameter is 30 inches and the chain stay length is 20.3 inches. The top tube length is 23.8 inches and the handlebar heart handlebar height is at 44.9 inches. The standover height is 5.5 inches and the handlebar length is 29.1 inches. The standover height is 28 inches and there is a maximum seat height of 38.6 inches. With all of those specs thrown out at you, let's go ahead and take a deep look into the strengths and weaknesses of this particular e-bike. So let's first go over the positives of this e-bike. For starters, when assembling the e-bike, when you right when you get it, it already comes 95% assembled, which is much less assembly required than any other e-bike I have received. All you really have to do is install the pedals and then just screw in the handlebar onto the handle, and that's about it. It comes charged just enough to take it for a test run right away. So by the time it shows up at your door, you can be out the door riding it within 15 minutes. 
Another really great thing is that this looks super, super cool. I mean, seriously, it looks like a small Harley Davidson motorcycle and it has a very, very comfortable seat. It definitely gets the looks from all over the place and people often mistake it for a motorcycle until I ride it on the sidewalk. Another good thing is the really big, really bright headlight. I think that this is what sets most e-bikes apart from others and the men always want the e-bike with one of these cool looking headlights. They'll take that over a standard e-bike any day. They even made the battery look like a gas tank, which is very cool. And there is a small holder embedded inside of the frame to carry your groceries or your knickknacks. It has a twist throttle, which is way better than the thumb type. And it has an excellent range of up to 90 miles. Now let's get to the not so good stuff. Let me start by explaining that I think that there are two different types of e-bikes. There are the e-bikes that you want to ride like a regular bike where you're actually pedaling and you're getting a really good workout. This is the type of bike that I personally love for off-road riding. Then there are the types of e-bikes that are just meant to use the throttle and pretty much just have pedals only in case of emergency if you run out of battery power and you have absolutely no other way to get the e-bike home in order to charge it. That is this kind of e-bike. In my opinion, it was not designed to pedal. The battery that looks like a gas tank is kind of big and bulky on the frame, and when you pedal, your knees hit the tank. I'm not that tall. You also do not have the option of adjusting the seat height, so you can't really adjust the way that you pedal. When your leg is fully pedaling and your foot is closest to the ground, it should not make your leg go fully straight, but there should be just a slight slant in your leg. I'm five foot seven, so I'm not a giant, but when I fully pedal, my legs are still bent much further than they should be for maximum efficiency. The only way that you can really adjust it is by moving your butt further back in the seat away from the handlebars, but then it sort of forces you to lean downward and down, making it bad for your back. So that is an issue. An additional issue is the double brackets that use that are used to hold the headlamp in place. Now, don't get me wrong, the headlamp is very bright, which makes this an excellent bike ride for nighttime, but the way it is designed, it lessens the option to turn. So you don't have the full rotation or as much rotation as you would with a standard e-bike. You don't want to be making abrupt or tight turns on an e-bike e-bike that goes as fast as this one does at 28 miles an hour, but it does mean that I have to make a four or six way turn in order to get the e-bike out of my house through my entryway. Another bad thing is that the grocery carrier under the frame looks more like a magazine rack than a grocery holder and it doesn't hold much. In fact, I would say that the designer just used the extra space to put a rack in because they didn't really know what else to do with that extra space. I have gotten comments from strangers that are sort of joking with me asking what magazine magazines that I put in that basket. Because of the design of it, it is open so you can't put your tools or something in there for because of the design. I would recommend turning it into a solid piece and maybe using it as a lockbox or something so that you can put your tools and your gear into it. Also, when I first got the e-bike, it only went about 18 miles per hour. There was no manual or assembly instructions included with the e-bike, so I was just sort of winging it. I emailed the company about how their website says that it goes 28 miles an hour, but mine only went about 18, and they said that it had to be unlocked, and then they gave me the instructions. This was an inconvenience and it was an unnecessary extra step. I also emailed them with some issues I was having regarding the gear shifter, not providing any resistance when it was on the full level seven. And they emailed me back and pretty much told me that it was my fault and that they never heard of that complaint happening with them before. Um, I did end up adjusting it and fixing it myself, um, but their customer service des definitely has some room for improvement. So let's take another ride and I will let you know if I think that this is a good e-bike or not.
So in my personal opinion, overall, this is a really great e-bike. If you are looking for an e-bike that is not meant to be pedaled for exercise, it is really cool looking and it has the technology that backs up the cool way that it looks. It's easy to use, easy to assemble, and it's super comfortable. I like it a lot and it is in my top three favorite scooter or motorcycle style e-bikes to ride in town. It went up hills pretty easily with very, very slight slowing down and I was having so much fun riding it that I did get lost and I ended up meeting a llama, a sheep, and a horse, true story, out in the boonies because it has a 400 pound weight capacity which is really high and it also has a large seat. I will be using it to ride with my family when they come to visit me again and in case you were wondering, one of my family members did finally come out and they had a blast riding off-road with me. This is not the only e-bike that Hayoki offers. They also offer different styles that are intended to be ridden solely off-road. So if you are interested in checking out this e-bike or the other e-bikes that they have to offer, I will go ahead and leave a link down in the description box below. And I really hope that this video has been fun and this information has been helpful to you. And as always, do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.